This story takes place in a glorious HOA. Could you hear the sarcasm in my voice? Let's begin. My husband and I moved into our neighborhood nearly two years ago. We have a set of neighbors next to us who, let's just say, haven't always felt the most neighborly. They're middle-aged and older, and the only thing that I can think is that they don't have interest knowing they're much younger first-time homeowner neighbors. Anyways, they own two large dogs that they will occasionally leave out in their fenced-in backyard. It's only occasionally, not every day, but when they're outside, one of them will bark non-stop. And when I say non-stop, I mean non-stop, until it gets let back in. Usually, they're only out for a little bit, so no big deal. But a few times, they've been left out for a couple of hours at a time, meaning that a couple of hours of insistent, loud barking. At one point, I went down a rabbit hole of looking to file an anonymous noise complaint, but I was told I'd have to start a paper trail where I confront the neighbor about their noise, have them sign a document, then submit it, and basically follow up with any additional complaints. I forget the whole process, but I was not interested in starting a whole process with neighbors on this. Well, yesterday was bad. They let their dogs out at around 1 or 2 in the afternoon, and they were out all day non-stop barking until around 9 or 10 at night when they finally let the dogs back in. I was worried that they'd left for a trip and planned to leave the dogs out all night. After a few hours of the constant barking, my patience was wearing very thin. I was getting very frustrated. I saw on a Facebook group for our subdivision someone call out their specific house, no names mentioned, but specifically describe their house and dogs and ask them not to leave their dogs out barking all day. Someone else went on and commented complaining as well. There was even another comment on that comment regarding the house. My better judgment failed me and I went on and I left a short comment saying that I've heard the dogs barking too. They've left them out for hours before. Now this Facebook group gets a lot of posts every day so I didn't think it would be seen by many. I expected it just to get buried and really my main reasons for commenting were for one, to tell the other neighbors that yes, we hear it too, you're not crazy, and two, start a trail if well, there's anything the HOA can do to step in on noise complaints. Well, our neighbors saw it. I forgot the husband has my husband's cell number, so he sent my husband a text early this morning ticked off saying if we had a problem, we should have just talked to them in person, not blasted it on Facebook. The wife got the post saying that they're away and their dog sitters left the dogs outside all day. They contacted them and it won't be a problem again, but she was ticked at the claims that it's happened before calling it all bullcrap. Now note that I'm not the one that made the original post about the dogs. However, I do completely regret my leaving a comment and really really wish that I could go back to last night and have not said anything. My husband then texted me at work completely ticked off that I would comment anything about our neighbors on social media. I immediately deleted the comment off Facebook and sent apologies to my husband, and I expect he'll want us to both go over and apologize later. My husband hasn't been responding to my text all day. It doesn't help that we had an argument last night about the dogs barking. He wanted to go talk to them, and I said, nah, they already hate us. Let's just find a way to report it to the HOA. Why I thought leaving a comment was a good idea? I have no idea. Literally, I just wasn't thinking. I was just mad, and I agreed with others. Today has completely sucked. I've been thinking about it all day at work, and I actually started crying to a coworker about it for a few brief moments. They were supportive, and sometimes we screw up, just apologize and shake this one off, and then gave me a hug. I know I'll have to probably apologize later today after my husband and I both get home from work. Any advice? I'm kind of flustered with words under pressure. This person says, OP did not screw up, and OP replies, I was a little upset and freaked out this morning by just how upset my husband was over it. We're both typically pretty chill people, but I think what upset him was that he suggested going over and talking to them. I shut it down on the argument of, it won't change anything and they'll know who complained, and then turned around and did it the exact opposite by posting a comment on social media. Actually, I posted right before our argument, but still. Yeah, I mean, if you post it online, there is a chance that they can see it. And if he wanted to go talk to them, you know, man to man, woman to woman, and then you just say no and then post that, I can see where he might be upset. How would have you handled this one? I sold this house to you and I want to buy it back for less than half the price posted by my kinetic. First, let me describe the kind of aunt that we have. This aunt, or entitled aunt I should say, of ours has been the source of headache for us as a family, emotionally and monetarily. She would always ask my mom and dad for a loan that would take years for her to pay. Where those loans go is one of the biggest questions to date. 
and whenever my mom or my eldest sister would ask her for the payment, she would just always play the I'm family card and be all emotional and crap to play on my mom's emotions. My mom has a soft spot with her family and she would most likely, well, just let it slide. But not my eldest sister. She would constantly remind and warn my aunt Karen to pay her debts or she'll do something about it. My aunt would then turn to my mom asking for protection from my sister, to which my mom would talk to my sister about it. My sister, though, is not having it and is just relentless on her pursuit of making my aunt pay her debts. This got to a point where my aunt warned to sue my sister if she doesn't stop, to which my sister openly invited. My sister works on a law firm, so she knows the law and that our aunt Karen has no case at all. Ultimately, our aunt paid, but not without any parting words of how our family are a bunch of rude people and that she would never talk to us again and such. But after a month or so, she made up with my mom and everything was well, except for my eldest sister. So for some context with the title, my aunt put her house up for sale due to her children moving out. She had two daughters who were all married now. Initially, she said that the house was getting too big for me to keep and maintain and that she'd plan on buying a nice condominium near the downtown area. Her house is like a 30 to 45 minute drive from downtown. My uncle didn't want her to sell to someone that they don't know or at least they don't have an affinity to, so she suggested just to sell the house to a relative or to a super close friend. My aunt then talked to my youngest sister, and I have three sisters and I'm the only guy, and then pitched her the idea of buying the house from her. At first, my sister didn't really want to entertain the idea of buying a house at this point in time as they have two kids that they are sending to a not so cheap school. But my aunt then pulled the sentimental value card and that it would be a shame if the house was sold to someone else. Admittedly though, the house did have sentimental value for us siblings and cousins. We used to spend our summers over there as it's in a pretty nice neighborhood and we have friends there as well. A basketball court is fronting the house, which is a win-win situation since they both have boys and her husband is a good basketball player. My aunt saw this as an opportunity for the boys and her husband to train her whatever. To my aunt's credit, she did have a nice pitch to my sister, so I gotta give her that. My sister and her husband discussed this in length. It literally, it took a month before they had their decision. My sister and her husband, they decided to buy the house as they have long planned to have a house of their own. But her husband's grandmother begged them to stay at the current house they're living in until his grandmother can return back as she was sorting something out from a different city. So they decided to have at least until they are ready to move. My eldest sister, who by the way was against all of this, helped with all the contract and the legal stuff so that they can cover their bases. The details of the sale, well they aren't really familiar to me, but if my memory serves me right, the house and the lot was sold for more or less 1 million pesos. My sister gave my aunt a more than generous amount of time to move out, which was six months. When the time came that everything was moved out, my sister and her husband decided to pay a visit to their recently bought house and see to what extent the renovation would be. And to their surprise, the condition of the house was a literal crap hole. The walls and the ceiling were falling apart. The tiles on the floor were chipped or starting to get chipped. The main bedroom was a mess and the kitchen smelled like someone died in there for weeks. Although my aunt did disclose that some renovation work would be needed, but she never disclosed that the house was that screwed up. But whatever, they decided to have the house renovated and it cost them another 300000 Once the renovation was done, the difference, it was night and day. As they were not moving into the new house yet, they listed the house for lease on some places and it garnered a lot of interest. The house was then leased to a foreign couple. The transaction went smoothly with the help of my eldest sister once again, and the couple even paid full price for the whole duration of the lease. Everything was smooth as butter until yesterday. My sister got a call from the couple who leased the house early in the morning when she was dropping off the kids to school. This was on a Monday, and my sister is usually super busy on these days. And this was one of those days. She answered the call and the following ensued. Now, side note, this is all based from my sister's retelling of the events and conversations. It might not be 100% accurate, but I'll try to be as close to it as possible. So we have my sister, the nice husband, the nice wife, and the entitled Aunt Karen. Sister says, 
Hello, nice husband. Haven't heard from you for a long time. May I know why you called? Hey, there's uh, someone at the gate claiming that uh, this is her house. Sister's confused and she says, Huh? Uh, she just might be the crazy person roaming around the area. Well, uh, no, she showed me pictures of the house and her in it. At this point, my sister kind of knew what was happening, so she hurriedly drove there. She was coming from a different side of town, so it took her about an hour to get there. When she got there, she saw entitled Aunt Karen outside screaming to let her in. The neighbors were already out and witnessing the commotion. Karen sees my sister and hurriedly goes to her. Hey, sister, they won't let me in, and she points toward the nice couple. Karen, what are you doing here? Well, this was once my house. Am I not allowed to enter? What do you mean? I sold you this house, remember? And now I see that someone else is living here. Well, they are leasing the house. What? Why would you lease the house to someone that I don't know? Sister's getting angry at this point. She says, because this is my house. I can lease it to whoever I want to. At this point, my sister couldn't believe the stupidity of this situation and was kind of getting embarrassed with the neighbors looking on, so she told Karen to go inside so they can discuss it. Once they were in the house, my sister introduced Karen to the couple who leased the property, and the following ensued. How much did you lease this house for? Karen asked the couple. Uh, excuse me? I said, how much did you pay for the lease? The wife chimes in. Hey, I'm sorry, but uh, we don't see the need of discussing that to you. Why not? Turns to my sister and asks, how much are they paying for this lease? It's, it's none of your business, Aunt Karen, okay? This is my property, and I'm already generous enough to have you let in. Whoa, 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 whoa. I sold you this beautiful house, and you treat me this way? She looks at the couple again. Was the house sold to you too? Tell me. The husband laughs. Uh, look, lady, even if we did buy it, we don't need to tell you the specifics since we're not dealing with you. And no, uh, we didn't buy this house. You're a liar, faces my sister and says, I'll take the house back mm, now. Um, excuse me, are you out of your mind? No, I am not. And it's clear to me that you're an irresponsible homeowner. She takes something from her bag and says, here, take this 300,000 pesos and give me back my house. 300,000 pesos? Seriously? She slams the money to the Karen's chest. My sister's fuming at this point. You need to leave my property right now. I won't allow you to disrespect me in front of these nice people. 300,000 when we bought this house for you for 1 million? You can't kick me out of here. This is my house. Sister grabs her phone. I'm calling the cops now. Karen then bolts out of there, and on her way out, she screamed, I'll come back and take the house. This is not the end of this. After Karen was nowhere to be seen, my sister broke down in front of the nice couple. The couple asked her a few details about Karen, and they were super understanding. My sister offered to return about a quarter of the total money that they paid for the lease, but the couple said that it's not necessary. Her husband knew what happened, and he was furious to a point that he almost went to the condominium where Karen was living in, but my sister was able to calm her down before anything bad had happened. As for now, my sister and her husband are seeking legal advice from my eldest sister and her firm. Do you agree with this comment? The aunt has absolutely no legal standing in this situation to do a dang thing. The house is your sister's, free and clear. She can do what she wants with it, and I'm sure that your other sister will tell her the same. I would suggest telling your sister and the couple leading the house to get a stay away order against the aunt so she just can't barge in without consequences. You think a restraining order would work? Let me know. Revenge on the Movie Producer, posted by Kibu Fox. Please allow me to note well in advance, this story is not mine. In fact, it's a rather popular story in the town that I once lived in, Savannah, Georgia, and it centers around one homeowner who got royally annoyed with a movie producer. There will be a note at the end about the fellow the story is about for those interested. Okay, so first and foremost, when movie producers are looking for places to set a movie that takes place in colonial or even 1800 cities in the US, due to the sheer number of parks, wide roads, and period houses, they'll often select Savannah, Georgia. They'll pull up all the Spanish moss out of the trees or trim it back, 
pour dirt on the roads around the squares, and effectively backdate that part of the city to fit most any place, even up to some having used the area as a setting for places like early Washington DC and even places in Britain or France. Typically, when producers do this, they will pay each homeowner whose house is used as background flavor a couple thousand dollars for the licensing to do so. That'll be important later, trust me. They issue some rules like no electric lights being visible, not coming out of any door that faces the street, and you have to move your automobiles away from the drive if you have a drive. Well, in 1979, a producer came from Hollywood with the intention of using Savannah for that very purpose. Specifically, the producer was from one of the big three-letter TV channels and was working on making a made-for-TV movie, talking about the events after the assassination of Lincoln and the subsequent accusations of the doctor present at his death. The production went to the city to seek permission and then sent an announcement out to each of the homeowners telling them of the various days that the shoot was going to take place. However, much to their downfall, they also noted that the production company would not be compensating the homeowners for the use of their homes as backdrops. This was met with some great annoyance by the homeowners, who turned to the city for help only to be told that it was their civic duty to allow the use of their homes. Most everyone agreed to this and bit their lips. One homeowner, however, didn't. He decided to get revenge on the production, attempting to screw up their shooting every chance he got. He first started by leaving his car out in front of his house only to have it towed before filming started. He threatened legal action against the studio, but that fell on deaf ears. He forbade the use of his home in some of the shots, but the production company got the city to make him back down. Eventually, enough was enough. So he waited, biding his time until it was certain that they were filming. When the day came that his house was being used as a background shot, the homeowner grabbed a massive Nazi flag and hung it out in front of the house out of one of the top windows. The production company balked. They knew that this ruined any shot they'd use there. And what's more, they started to question just when he'd put the flag up. Was it just the one day? Or had all the previous shots, some of which showed the house from across the square, been ruined as well? They turned to the city for help, and the city just basically shrugged, saying that it was his First Amendment right to do that, and implied that had the production company paid the homeowners, as had always been done before, then this probably wouldn't have happened. In the end, the production company had to end shooting and go to the homeowner begging for him to remove the offending flag. He did eventually do so, but only after his lawyer got a contract in writing that required the production company to pay all the homeowners for having their homes in the shot. The flag came down and the shooting wrapped in less than a day. Interestingly, it's said that in the movie in question, The Ordeal of Dr. Mudd, there are several shots where you can see that bright red flag flying from one of the homes in a distance. That stunt cost the producer quite a substantial amount of money and pushed production back at least a year while they tried to find every single instance that that flag flew in the background shots. This homeowner would go on to himself become very famous, though not for a good reason. Even so, he lives on among the legends of that city, both for his revenge against a movie producer and his later brush with fame. The fellow in question is none other than Jim Williams. Williams was an American antique dealer and a historic preservationist based in Savannah, Georgia. He played an active role in the preservation of the Savannah Historic District for over 35 years. Williams was arrested on May 2, 1981 for the alleged murder of 21-year-old Danny Hansford with whom he had been having a relationship with at Mercer House. After the subsequent four trials, a record in the state of Georgia, Williams was finally acquitted by a jury in Augusta in May 1989, eight years after his arrest. Williams died in 1990 of heart failure, though AIDS is also suspected. He is the center of the story, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil novel, and later Clint Eastwood movie. Talk about standing up for your neighbors, holy cow, what a guy, but then to find out his other shady past and passing away a year after he was acquitted by a jury, oh my goodness, what a roller coaster of a story, what do you think?
the HOA finds me, but I'm not even in the HOA. Click the video on your screen so you don't miss the fallout of this one, and I'll see you there.